Hi, my name is Stephen Turner. I'm the president of Gesher Galizia. Today we have with us Andrew Zalewski, the past vice president of Gesher Galizia. Andrew has been a frequent speaker at meetings of Jewish genealogical societies and cultural and academic institutions in the US and abroad. His interests in writings have focused on Jewish cultural transformation, educational access, modernizing impact of Jewish physicians and Jewish political and legal rights in Galicia. Unique archival records, population surveys, maps and old newspapers provide the background for his in-depth description of Galicia. He authored two books on Austrian Galicia, Galician Trails, The Forgotten Story of One Family, and Galician Portraits, In Search of Jewish Roots, in which he traced the story of his ancestors in a historical context. Andrew Zalewski is a retired cardiologist and a former professor of medicine at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. After leaving academic practice, he held executive positions in the pharmaceutical industry, focusing on global collaborations to advance new healthcare solutions. Thank you, Andrew, for joining us here today. It's great to be with you, Steve. Okay, thank you. And I want to add, just uh, on a personal note, that uh, Andrew and I both have roots from Rohatin or Rohatin in uh, the the Stanislavov province of Galicia. And uh, when Andrew helped me uh, translate a record I found from my grandfather, uh, we saw that the same midwife delivered my grandfather and Andrew's grandmother. Well, it's amazing how genealogy can uh, uncover various connections, right? Right. <laughs> I wrote is... about that in the last issue of the Galician, like, who would have imagined right. in this very small state? How big was Rowatin? Right. Well, as, as you probably know, uh, this midwife, uh, whom we both share in our genealogical tree, in a sense, right. uh, was a very productive woman because um, uh, we also discovered some time ago that our good friend Alex Fellers, uh, uh, great grandfather, I believe, was also delivered by the same woman. So. Right. There right. is more to discover. <laughs> right, right, right. And, if, and and just to think, and then this, this very small shtetl, within, within a few years, were delivered two babies whose grandfathers, whose grandsons, rather, yes. would go on to lead an organization devoted to Jewish heritage and culture from Galicia 150 years later. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's quite a coincidence. Yeah. And uh, okay, so now let's get into Andrew's story with Getzer Galizia. Now, you transitioned from cardiologist to author, historian, and educator. How did that come about? That's a good question, Steve. Um, so, so, sometime uh, maybe 18, 20 years ago, I realized probably like most of our listeners that I, when it was time to listen to our, my parents' story about the past, I thought that this was a boring subject and I was listening, uh, I would say sparingly, that's a nice way to, to, to express. So about 18, 20 years ago, I realized that um, I had a very little understanding of the history of the family on my mother and my father's side. My mother was Christian, my father was Jewish. Um, and uh, this was also the time that, you know, of course my children were growing up, they were entering into their own adult uh, life. And it dawned on me, uh, Steve, that um, I have very little story to tell them. And that, I think, propelled me to dive deeper first into my maternal history and then my paternal history. Okay. Now, you, you then wrote two books. Like a lot of us have gotten that same feeling and we, to dive into our family story, but we don't then go about writing books about that. 
How did that come about? Well, in a sense, I have to give a, a lot of credit to my wife because when I started to double, and I was very timid at the beginning, you know, being afraid that uh, there is so few records uh, surviving, which turned out not to be true, quite a lot of records uh, uh, one can find. Uh, so my wife at that time said, uh, um, you know, you remember what, what you collect in your mind will not be transmitted to, to our kids. You have to write this down. And that's how this was the beginning of thinking about the book. But in essence, you know, Steve, again, this is probably what we all share. Studying family history, studying genealogy is almost like peeling this proverbial uh, onion. Yeah, first you, you, you want to create a little bit information, you know, what were the names, key dates when somebody was born, married and died. You create your genealogical tree, of course, there are always some gaps. That's probably like we all start. Well, there is a second element. Then you want to feel a little bit information between those dates that pop up through records. So you look to employment records, school records, maybe you are lucky enough that you can find some um, commercial records, something else than simply a date when somebody was born, married and died. And then there is a third, the, the widest, if you will, sphere of this uh, discoveries. Uh, that's the part that probably interested me the most is what those people in the past, what did they talk about around the dinner table? What was the milieu of this multicultural, multi-ethnic Galicia? What were the conflict? What were the tensions or aspirations? And, and I think those three layers combined together, I, I think, were the genesis of those books. So we have to, we have a lot to be thankful to Margaret for. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. For okay. the book and beyond. Anyone reading that, reading those books, which I highly recommend. Uh, so we have to keep in the back of your mind, Margaret and your lovely wife, for for giving the impetus for him to read those books. Okay, now you spent eight years on the board of Gesher Galicia. How did it come to be that you first joined the board? Well, when the first book came out, Galician Trail, Trails, um, one evening I got an email from a, a person whom I never heard before. Pamela uh, uh, Weisberger uh, sent me an email and Pamela was at that time a, a president uh, uh, of Gesher Galicia. Um, we met in New York when she was traveling from West Coast to the East Coast. And uh, I was very impressed uh, uh, with her approach to genealogy, to history. You knew about Kesha Galicia at the time. Yes, yes, yeah, I knew. Um, um, Pamela was a wonderful person in a sense of, uh, that uh, not only tireless worker on behalf of organization, but also someone when you talk to her, she always gave you the room to share what you wanted to uh, convey about your discoveries or understanding of, 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 the, of the past. Uh, uh, very person, very uh, person who was very, if you, if you will, uh, uh, humble about enormous amount of knowledge that she carried herself. And, you know, from conversations, from participating together in a few um, educational programs uh, with Pamela. Pamela um, she invited me on the board uh, in 2014. And uh, what was your first role on the board? Well, mostly to, 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 to provide, uh, uh, to provide uh, historical expertise, or consulting expertise on, on a history of Galicia, um, and as, as, as I mentioned, uh, uh, from the very beginning, I, I became very interested about uh, our responsibility, if you will, 
to provide a high quality uh, public education uh, to members and non-members of Gersher Galicia. Um, let us not forget that uh, whoever uh, dives into the exploration of his or her family history uh, immediately is challenged by complex geopolitical past, changing borders, uh, not to mention complexity of multilingual, not only records, but multilingual memories of, of Galicia, multi-ethnic. Uh, so those uh, multi-layer complexities uh, can be not only explained, uh, but also can be uh, explained in a such a way that provide uh, impetus for deeper understanding, for deeper exploration of the place. Okay, now as head of the education subsec subsection of Geshe Galicia, you traveled often speaking to groups around the world, always teaching and promoting Geshe Galicia. I always said that listening to you speak was always a pleasure. I'm sure many who listened to you in these various locales agree with me. Is there anything in particular that stands out to you or any particular event that, that highlights your, in your memory? this role that you played? Well, uh, thank you, Steve, for kind words. I, I, I have very much enjoyed this part uh, um, of my presence on the board of Kershaw Galicia. You know what uh, always for me is the most fascinating is to hear people's questions. I think through people's questions, not only the next time when you speak, on a topic, you speak a little bit better, but you also discover um, you discover how quickly uh, individuals make connections between the topic that you presented about uh, history of Galicia, about the records uh, coming from Galicia. How quickly people make those connections uh, with their uh, family history. One of the part of our educational program that, that I plan to continue is, as you know, our uh, course, Gesher Galicia course, uh, provided together with Graz College. In fact, I finished last round of the course last week. Uh, and uh, to your question, it is fascinating to see how uh, we carry with us a certain misconception of the past. Uh, for example, it always comes as a surprise to, to many, many um, folks uh, with whom I encounter um, how much our ancestor traveled, how they moved around. Uh, we, we don't anticipate this uh, thinking that only we in 21st century um, uh, travel uh, broadly. Uh, sometimes as a surprise when I talk about communication between Jewish com communities, how, uh, what comes as a surprise, how quickly news about things happening in Berlin, for example, uh, could travel to Galicia, how quickly news what happened in Galicia traveled to Vienna and back and forth, and we can make a lot of, of this type of example. So this feedback uh, from, from our members and non-members who I'm very privileged to meet at those uh, uh, public speaking, uh, th this is probably the most fascinating part. Good. Now you became editor of our journal, the Galiziana, and under your stewardship, it really cemented its role as a first class journal relating to Galicia. What were your goals when you first took over? Uh, you know, I, I feel that we are all bombarded daily with emails, uh, text messages. <clears throat> some of you, some of our audience, I'm sure, follows some uh, messages on Twitter. Uh, Twitter. Um, I, I felt that uh, we owe to each other a little bit quiet space where we could uh, dive a little bit deeper into, again, the same things that we talked about public speaking, history of Galicia, social context of this 
multi-ethnic, multilingual uh, environment, uh, how can we perhaps flash out details about the family history, individual family histories, details that could be of interest to broader, a broader audience. So that, that was my goal. How can we create that format uh, uh, for the journal? And I, I think uh, Gershel Galicia is blessed now having uh, um, Jody Benjamin as an editor of uh, Most definitely. the journal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, good. Well, and we're gonna, we have, we have our work cut out for us at Geshe Galicia today to keep up the momentum that you brought to the Galiciana. And we're, that's one goal of mine, and we're going to work very hard to try to help maintain the, the high level that it has attained under your, your leadership. Okay, but now you also headed several research projects. Let's go into that a bit. I'll, I'll mention a project and talk to me a little bit about yeah. what made you get started with the project and, and, and how it led. So let's first talk about the Josephine and Franciscan surveys. So research always was of my interest, both professionally <laughs> prior to my stint with Gesher Galicia, but, and of course in Galicia, in, in Gesher Galicia. Um, so uh, Josephine and Franciscan surveys, uh, maybe for our listening, it's important to put a little bit of context. These were um, a surveys uh, essentially of all communities in Galicia and beyond Galicia conducted at the end of 18th century uh, that were conducted for the purpose of taxation. For us in 21st century, uh, more interesting is that they can provide a picture um, of the communities, including uh, communities in, in Galicia um, from the 18th century. Not many vital records survived. Um, so these are for a Josephine surveys and Franciscan surveys uh, span period of first half of 19th century, which we always uh, see some gaps in vital records. So those, those two types of records, Josephine uh, surveys and Franciscan surveys can fill some gaps. So what kind of information we can derive? Uh, um, uh, they recorded in those surveys, um, uh, house owners and land owners in individual communities. So in other words, if I look at my family or you look at your family, Steve, you won't find all the members of the household, but you will find if your ancestor owned the house or had land, you could find the name of the family head, if you will. Again, as we talked up front, uh, it provides another layer of, of information. Right. In, in addition to that, if one wants to go a little broader, it gives you a little bit information about the community. So sometimes between the houses with the names uh, attached to them, you will find in those, uh, in those registers uh, um, entries about synagogues, about headers, these are traditional Jewish schools, and then modern schools will appear later on uh, in Franciscan surveys. So you begin to reconstruct a little bit, kind of multidimensional picture of the community. Right. And I want to add to that, that uh, working together with Gesture Galicia maps, and now even our interactive maps, you could take take a house in a particular town and just by clicking on the house in the map get an outline of all the jewish records related to that house for many years oh, and wow. you could see who neighbors are and how uh, who lived next to who because we know that extended families like to live together and yeah. we know that the Galician families had a lot of different surnames, even within the same family. So you couldn't always tell by the surnames. So uh, these surveys are great. Working together with the maps that are run so great, greatly by our, uh, the map room is run so greatly by our map guru, Jay Osborne. 
uh, you could really help in your individual family research in that way. Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, what you just mentioned brought a memory. <laughs> Probably this would be even better answer than I gave you before you asked me about some interesting uh, feedbacks uh, from the public uh, speaking. Uh, I do remember giving uh, once a talk on, on Jewish Galicia and um, in a discussion, somebody came to me and said, you know, my grandmother uh, uh, mentioned that this river uh, was running by her house and I and my husband went to Ukraine. This was like five, six years ago. And we figured out, you know, grandma must have confused something. Uh, the river was like two miles away from the supposed house. So I said, well, let, let's, let's, let, let me see if we have the map. Uh, maybe you can look a little bit. And we looked at the old maps. Uh, again, the, the maps that Jay Osborne puts so nicely together. And we found that the uh, river today is not the river. Uh, Wow. You know, 100 years ago, river was running a little different course. And in fact, grandma was absolutely correct. River was next to her house. So he, they should have known better than to question their <laughs> grandparents. <laughs> OK, so the next next research project would be the medical students project. Yes. Want to talk yes. a little bit about that? So um, I didn't have uh, in my family, uh, uh, doctors, I'm, I'm a physician, but, but the, the, the reason why I embraced this project was not from a medical professional experience, but mostly from a historical point of view, uh, you know, a connection between Jews and uh, medicine is, uh, you know, centuries, centuries old. Um, in a period of early modern time and then age of enlightenment, uh, medicine were very often was uh, a discipline that was more accessible to Jews than other um, uh, professions requiring university studies. So uh, this is in a sense a mirror how uh, the access for uh, Jews developed, uh, access educational access developed, and then also on the other side, it also reflects uh, a Jewish embrace of education. It's, it was a fascinating ride, and I think Gesher Galicia is unique in a sense as a genealogical organization. We have now probably the largest database of Jewish uh, medical students and Jewish physicians. I'm making this distinction because not everybody who went to university graduated. We have now the records of Jewish medical students and physicians from the end of 18th century until, until 1939. Um, it's, our listeners, listeners might be interesting that uh, for the first time, uh, Jews were formally uh, allowed to uh, enter universities in Habsburg monarchy was in 1782 with the reforms of then Emperor Joseph. So that's the first set of records that begin this data repository. The last set of records is from 1939, um, from the fall, from the autumn of 1939, uh, from uh, Lvov or Lviv. Lvov and Lviv at that time is uh, under uh, Soviet occupation and uh, university in the city opens and uh, uh, close to 2000 Jews uh, apply to study at the university. And this is the last uh, data set uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, project. Uh, um, so this is a very important repository. Many of our uh, members uh, uh, have discovered that their uh, family members not only studied medicine, again, talking about interesting feedback, Steve, that you asked before. I do remember one of, uh, one of the, uh, the persons who discovered that her grandfather studied for a year or two years medicine. Ultimately, he became chemist. This is during the interwar period. And then she said, you know, I was very surprised 
that he was uh, studying medicine because the family lore was that he had such a bad bedside manners but now i understand why he became a chemist so <laughs> okay, okay. Cool. That's, that's interesting i want to add also that um andrew recorded uh webinars for us on many of these topics on many of these research projects how to read the maps and the surveys and stuff like that and the uh, geshe Galicia members could find that on the members portal and at some point they'll be uh, uploaded to youtube where the uh, it'll be open to the general public i just want to let people know if they want that there are a lot of very good presentations on the members portal in the webinar section for people to hear andrew speak specifically on these areas okay now i want to go to the uh project in relation to the 1848 Reichstag petitions. Well, this is again coming to this uh, peeling the onion. Um, so we already looked at vital records for our family member. Then we looked maybe at school records, but then you want to find out what those ancestors talks about. So that leads me to the 1848 petition drive in Galicia. This was a very, very uh, tumultuous uh, year at that time without diving too much into history. <clears throat> Jews for the first time participated in two uh, province-wide political activities. One was earlier in the year, a uh, first uh, general voting, uh, well, I shouldn't say general, uh, a voting uh, to the first, uh, to, to select, to elect uh, uh, first uh, deputies uh, to uh, the Austrian uh, uh, parliament, um, even before uh, being granted full political rights. Uh, in 1848, Jewish community was able to elect during that year uh, four uh, Jewish deputies. Uh, to pan-Austrian parliament, the very first pan-Austrian parliament. The second event um, about which you are asking about, Steve, uh, was the petition across uh, entire province uh, in which Jews participated uh, with Poles and with Ruthenians, that was the name that was used for Ukrainian population at the time. And this was a petition for and against an idea to divide uh, Galicia into two parts. Most, uh, most Jews sided with Poles and uh, petitioned the government uh, against the uh, division of Galicia. So we discovered a few years ago uh, in uh, the Austrian State Archive uh, uh, pages and pages of petitions uh, uh, full of signatures from various towns in Galicia. Uh, and some of those uh, uh, pages we copied, they are on Galicia, Gesher Galicia uh, website in record inventories, and some of them, some of them we also uh, index, and uh, uh, that adds information to, if you are lucky to find uh, the name of your ancestor, uh, it, it gives a sense where this individual resided, but it also gives you a sense uh, of what people were talking about, what they were passionate about, about the political participation in the events, again, that happened before Jews received full political rights. And that's not even mentioning how cool it is to see a signature from uh, from your ancestor from like 170 years ago. Yeah. Just seeing that signature alone is, uh, is 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 an incredible feeling, and I, but I, I want to emphasize that to see the signatures, I believe you have to be a Geshe Galicia member. Is that correct? That is correct. That is yeah, correct. You need yes, to yes. you need to be a member. So, which is certainly might be worth the fifty dollars if you're not a member today, because <laughs> to to want to to want to go see that. Okay, now the final project that we're going to talk about today is something that you just started recently, and it's still ongoing, and you you've uh, agreed. To, to supervise to its end, the Galician Jewish Students in Vienna project. Yes, yes. So this is kind of uh, outcrop, if you will, uh, from a Jewish medical uh, students. Uh, um, 
uh, together with our colleagues from uh, business school, business university uh, and economics from Vienna, um, uh, we uh, embark on a project to index and provide uh, genealogist uh, uh, records of their ancestors who went to Vienna to study in the famed uh, Export Academy and later uh, World Trade University in Vienna. So this covers uh, a span between uh, 1890s until 1938, until Anschluss. Uh, and um, we've completed a first part, uh, the Export Academy uh, data are on our website and everybody can uh, access through either uh, record inventories or through uh, all Galicia database. So let me just mention that uh, the very first woman graduate from Export Academy was Anna Baidov, a Jewish woman from Colonia in Eastern Gal from East Galicia. Uh, and the second part from the World Trade University um, data will be available, I would say, Steve, September, October. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Now, you've been teaching this course in Gratz College that you mentioned before. And you just believe it you finished, I believe, your third series of the course. Fourth. Fourth. Okay. Yeah. Fourth. Are you going to continue doing this? I would love it. Yes. Uh, I, I, I really derive a lot of satisfaction meeting uh, uh, folks who, who want to learn a little bit more about Galicia. And again, as I mentioned before, who have this aha moment. Uh, uh, discussing, reviewing together uh, during the course, this multi-layer history of our ancestors. Good, good, good. And uh, those who would love to take Andrew's course, and like I said, it's always a pleasure to listen to Andrew. Uh, if you're a member of Geshe Galicia, you will get a 25% discount off the course at Gratz College. So pay attention to our announcements uh, for when the next course will be there. Okay, so now that you retired from Geshe Galicia, what do you see in your future? And uh, maybe another book? It could be, it could be. Uh, everything is uh, possible. Um, uh, um, of course, I'm not going to disappear uh, entirely from the Geshe Galicia scene, as you mentioned. You better before. not, you better not. <laughs> right, right, right. It's a wonderful organization and... Uh, 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 I'm always uh, available to, 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 to support this organization. Uh, on my, uh, my new interests, uh, but connected to Galicia is I, you know, we focus, and this is part of the course, part of many articles in the Galicianer, we focus mostly on emigration out of Galicia for obvious reasons, uh, looking for better future for economic, uh, uh, social advancement, um, you know, the massive emigration from Eastern Europe to the New World and elsewhere in, uh, in, in Europe uh, is a very common topic that we cover, focusing on the end of 19th century, beginning of 20th century. But I want to kind of put this a little bit on a head, and I am also very interested about people coming to Galicia, coming from a variety of different places, usually at the end of 18th century and 19th century, so somewhat earlier. Uh, I'm now following a number of individuals from Bavaria in Germany, from Bohemia, today's Czech Republic, from Austrian Silesia, today Czech Republic again, who at the end of 19th, 18th century, when, with annexation of this uh, new province that became part of uh, Habsburg monarchy, uh, were attracted to that place. And uh, it's a fascinating story too, because what quite often happened is they were propelled certainly by hardship wherever they lived to seek better fortune some, somewhere else. 
But landing in that place, in some cases, they were also be those transformational figures in their own families, bringing the family to a very different level, um, culturally, linguistically. Uh, so that's the, that's a new topic uh, at time investigating. Okay, so, so I'd like to fi finish by just asking you this: if you could just briefly summarize, what does Geshe Galicia mean to you? Well, it's uh, as I mentioned before. I, I think we live in a fragmented world of Jewish genealogy. Uh, our listeners have access to many, many organizations. In fact, uh, for many people who are new to genealogy, that might be at, some, at first glance somewhat confusing. I think Gesher Galicia over the years developed uh, a very unique standing uh, uh, in this field of Jewish genealogy. It focuses primarily on one geographical field, uh, territory, today split between Ukraine and, and Poland. It has a very sharp focus complementing other organizations on providing this first layer of, uh, of genealogical discoveries, vital records, and kudos go to uh, uh, Tony Kahan, who for years was yes. head of our research and uh, uh, really formalized this research, bringing it on much higher level rather than simply uh, doubling in this record or that record. But that's only the first layer. Gesher Galicia provides uh, genealogists today this other aspect, the second layer of when we peel the onion that I mentioned before, how to fill the space between dates of death, marriages, uh, and, uh, and death. Uh, uh, school records, uh, you alluded, Steve, uh, um, uh, tax records, uh, uh, cadastral service records, census records, uh, and many, many others. So, so this is the second element that I think that what it meant for, for me, uh, that we, as an organization, we are able to bring this additional experience. And a third element is public education, is, 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 is sharing uh, with members and non-members uh, um, Public speaking course, for example, I mentioned. For members, we also have a journal. And again, uh, let me put my old hat, I hope you won't mind. And uh, let me uh, give a big, strong plug for all of you who listen to this podcast. Please uh, contact Jody uh, Benjamin with an ideas for an uh, article. Uh, Jody is a wonderful editor, will help you with those ideas. Uh, we need your contributions to the journal. Right. That's what makes the journal, journal shining. I agree. I agree. Well, um, I want to thank you, Andrew, for coming here today for what I think was a very interesting conversation. I want to add personally that Andrew uh, was a member, is a member of my Not Vernal State of Research group. And from watching that group that I founded a few years ago, uh, Andrew thought it would be a good idea to have me on the board of Geshe Galicia because of Andrew that I joined the board. And then after being on the board for a while and as Geshe Galicia was looking for a new president, Andrew uh, uh, headed the screening committee of looking for a new president and they came up with me. So I personally have a lot to thank Andrew for for uh, bringing me, I was a member for a long time, but I was not active. And uh, it certainly has, has fulfilled uh, a lot of my mission in genealogy. And I want to thank him for that. And uh, I want to say to Andrew, you may, not, you may be retired, but you're not gone. You know, exactly. we, have well, your, we know how to find you. Okay. Exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, if anyone has any questions on this email, 
uh, on this podcast, rather, you can email me at ssturner at geshekulitzer.org. I could forward them on to Andrew. And we thank you all listening for your support of Gesha Galicia. And we hope to see you at other events also. Thank you. Thank you very much, Steve. It was uh, good to be with you.